Hey, what's up guys? It's Big Beppers coming back at you. It's been a long time, almost eight months, I think. Um, been very busy with a, uh, a lot of stuff with life, focusing on work. Um, we moved recently, um, and so I've just been busy with stuff in general. Um, haven't really been feeling feeling the, the, uh, the motivation to uh, produce content, but today, uh, after all this time, I'm coming back at you with a new deck profile video. As I'm sure you saw in the title, yes, it is a Mega Colony deck profile, um, but it's not like normal Mega Colony build. Um, this is an aggro build. Uh, of course, it's for premium like always, since uh, I do primarily premium on this channel. Um, so as you can see, we have our starter here, Machining Worker Ain't your basic uh, Vieira starter. It's very useful. Uh, so we'll start with the grade 3s first. So first up, we have four copies of V Gridora. Um, so she's really here, not so much for the cradle effect, but for her second effect that lets you, uh, when she attacks, you can retire one of your rear guards, search your deck for a grade three, call it the rear guard circle, uh, and if you called this unit and the unit called, get 10,000 power. Um, and that is really important for working in combination with our next grade three, which is from the brand new clan selection, and that is Pincer Attack Mutant Intrude Scissors. Uh, so Intrude Scissors um, is the main multi-attack enabler of the deck. Uh, Intrude Scissors has two skills. The first is in drop zone. Um, the, end of your, uh, the end of the battle that your Vanguard attacked, if a new card was put into your opponent's damage zone this turn, you can counter boss one and call it. Um, and then he has another effect that on rear guard circle when he's placed, you can soul blast one, choose one of your other rear guards, stand it, and he gets 10,000 power. Just him, unfortunately, not the other unit, but... So, uh, on your grade 3 turn, if you ride Gridora, you swing with, you have two front row rear guards, you swing with one rear guard, then you swing with Gridora, you re retire um, that rear guard that you, well, you swing with both of your front row rear guards, swing with Gridora, retire one of them, call out an Intrude Scissor, Soul Blast to restand the other one, so now you have a 32k attacker here, you have something else over here, uh, and it just really allows you to apply the pressure. Um, and it's really great, and it works great also with, um, the Stride Gridora, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, and then our last grade three, we run, uh, still running two copies of, uh, Antlion. The, uh, Crit Pressure No Sentinels is really good, especially if you called it off of, uh, Gridora, um, because it'll be 32k, minus not including whatever boosts and triggers that you get. Um, and also it's in there for, you know, the potential cheese Zoa OTK plays if it gets to that, but the metagame's so fast right now with premium that you most likely won't be getting that, but it's there to have as a nice backup option. Uh, so now moving on to the grade two. So because we are a multi-attack focused deck, we want to focus on rear guards that gain a decent amount of power. So first off, we have our pretty much a staple in Mega Colony these days, uh, Machining Mantis. So if on place, Vanguard or Rearguard, Counter Blast 1, search top 6 for a grade 3, add it to your hand, and then uh, he gets 6k power. So he gets the power regardless of if you add something or not. Um... And because we are utilizing another card from Clan Selection that lets us put cards back into our deck, the shuffle is also really nice. Um, and just him being a 15k beat stick, um, and, and yeah, 20k if he's on a Protect 2 circle, which, spoilers, this deck actually prefers to Protect 2 because you're an aggro deck, so you want the bigger numbers. Um, he's an overall decent beater. Um, then another one is probably a card that not a lot of people have seen, um, and I was actually questioning if I wanted to run it myself, but in practice has been really good, and that is Spear Attack Mutant and Mega Lara Lancer. Try saying that five times fast. Um, so Mega Lara Lancer, or I'll just call him Lancer for short, um, so he has only one effect, uh, and it's when he attacks, he gets 2k for each of your opponent's rested rear guards. So if, your opponent, if you're playing against a, um, an opponent that actually keeps a field, he can actually be a really good beat stick. Um, and then his second part of that effect is then you can choose one of your rear guards, move it to soul, and then for that battle, your opponent cannot intercept. And that's really useful because there's a lot of um, a lot of decks that have um, units that can intercept that are higher shield value, um, like especially if you're going up against another like Protect 2 deck, which they're kind of few and far between, I know, and it's kind of a, um, kind of a stretch of the imagination, but... Um, you know, it, it can help, but really what that's there for is just building up soul, because the one resource that this deck has a very difficult time keeping and maintaining is soul. So that's really why he's in there. 
um, and just being a general beat stick. And then the last grade two that we run, we run three copies of Bloody Hercules um, on place for Rearguard Circle. So Blast One, he's a 15 e gauge 6K, so he's a 15K beat stick, which helps with our aggro plan. Um, and then on Vanguard Rearguard, on hit, he can give something else 6K, and then you can also counter charge one. So that's also really good because it creates on hit pressure. Um, and if it does hit, it's going to make your next attack uh, more powerful. I apologize. For that noise in the background, if you can hear it, I am recording this in the basement of my new apartment. Uh, unfortunately, I just didn't have a, any other good place. So I apologize if you hear uh, my uh, furnace turning on. So, on to the grade ones. So, I mentioned earlier we use uh, utilize a card that puts cards back into your deck, and that is this this card, from also from Clan Selection, uh, Mutant Gentleman High Class Moth. So, this guy is... I love this card. Um, it, it, it's fantastic. So he has two skills. The first one allows him to count as a grade three in both your deck and soul, which means that you can fetch him off of your grade three searches like Mantis. Um, and then in soul, he can be used as fuel for Antlion. So that's incredible. And then he also has an amazing second ability, which is an act on Rearguard Circle. You can rest him, and then you put a normal unit from your drop zone on the bottom of your deck to counter charge one. Um, and it, unfortunately... Uh, well, you counter charge one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and they can't intercept until uh, for the rest of the turn. Um, that clause not super great for the intercept because, like I said, mentioned earlier with Lancer, um, you don't really worry about intercepts too much because you're hitting higher power thresholds. But in the, the in the fringe instance, it can help. But then he also counter charges and he puts your cards back into your deck, so you can help you recycle your grade threes that you want your intrude scissors back into your deck, so you can call them back out again. And that's super important. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, he is a hard once per turn. Like it's not once per turn per copy. Like you use one, you want use one high class moth skill that turn. That's it. You can't use it for the rest of the turn. But regardless, this is overall a great, uh, great card and a great addition to the deck. And he, both him and um, Intrude Scissor are the reason I started testing with this deck, and I've been loving it so far. Uh, next up, we have Machining Hornet. So again, he's always also been kind of a staple for Mega Colony. Um, Vanguard Rearguard, when the, when it's attack or the attack it boosts hits, check the top six of your, of your deck for a grade three, add it to hand, and then if he was on Rearguard Circle, you move him to Soul. Helps with Soul, um, helps for your early grade digging, it can help find your, uh, high class moths, or your Gridoras, so that's also really great, um, and goes into Soul, helps build Soul, I probably already said that. And then our last grade one is four copies of Small Captain Butterfly Officer. Um, like I said... I have mentioned several times, I'm sure, this is an aggro deck. We want our units to hit numbers. This card, when placed, you rest it, it gives a unit 10,000 power, or rear guard 10,000 power, I'm sorry, and then at the end of that turn, that rear guard goes into soul and counter charges, and you counter charge one. So it does basically everything the deck wants to do. It gives you um, gives you bigger numbers for your, um, for your rear guard so that you're going to be multi-attacking with. Um, it moves cards to soul, so it helps maintain your soul, and it countercharges, although the deck isn't inherently reliant on counterblast, it is still a very good um, means of recurring resources. Um, and there was there was other cards that you could play, like pin, um, not pinch hopper, uh, spiteful hopper. Jesus Christ, I'm going back to Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, spiteful hopper, um, but he costs soul, and again, soul is very tight in this deck, so it's kind of an issue. Um, so that's that's it for the normal units. Uh, triggers are kind of basic. You run four heals, four V heals because they're great. Um, you run four of Riddled Honey, which is the crit stride fodder. Um, your grade threes are kind of important, although it's okay to discard the intrude scissors if you have a high class moth, but if you have to discard the Riddled Honey, it's not terrible. Um, four Mega Colony Battle of F. Again, we need soul, extra power, dig for your dig for your pieces it's, it's all around a general useful card and then of course for draw pg uh aggro deck so we are kind of kind of piece reliant more or less but i try to build as many redundancies into the deck as i can to make sure it functions how it needs to um but still the draw triggers are great um and just draw sentinels in general are are better than than grade one sentinels any day of the week in my opinion um now onto the g zone so your basically primary stride, and if things go right, the only stride you're ever going to need to go into, Guilty Empress, Dark Face Gredora. Um, she was from, I want to say it was Premium Collection Volume 1. Um, so, 
She has two skills. Her first is an act, counterblast one. Choose a face down card from your G zone, flip it face up. If you do, um, none of your opponent's units can stand during their next stand, fu- stand phase, and until the end of your opponent's next turn, they cannot call cards except from hand. That's huge. That shuts off all of your opponent's G guards. That's a big deal. If you're playing against any sort of phantom field deck that doesn't keep board presence, they can't superior call from anywhere except for their hand. So they can't try to come back at you. But really, that that effect, while incredibly powerful, um, isn't really what we focus on in this deck. Well, it does help a lot, believe me. But the, it's her second ability that we really, really, really um, utilize. And that's when she attacks, you can Soul Blast 1, search your deck for a grade 3, call it the Rear Guard Circle, and it gets 10,000 power. Um, so that's what lets you call it your Intrude Scissors. Um, so then you can use your Intrude Scissors to stand something else. Um, and I found the the biggest reason why I run Lancer in this deck is because with, with this, um, you can have the unit here, that like have a unit that you would be getting rid of by calling over. You swing with Lancer, suck it into Soul. Now you have, it fuels the Soul Blast for Gradora. So now you're only actually going minus one Soul as a net, as opposed to going minus two. So it helps to keep feed things like that. So there's a lot of synergy there. Um, now the all other stride that you could potentially go into, if need be, um, is Poison Sickle Mutant DD Overwhelm. I did. She doesn't really come up with a lot of the games that I've tested. But if you're in one of those like back to the wall situations where you just need to draw, your opponent's got a full board staring down at you, and you just need to draw a bunch of cards. This is a potential go to. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, like Gordora, like I want to say like nine times out of ten is going to be the stride that you play over her, but this is a, a decent backup option. And if you're going against a deck that's very counterblast heavy, her GB3 could, in niche situations, help give everything 2,000 power for each face down card your opponent has in their damage zone, which helps with kind of your multi-attack situation, but not really because your Vanguard is the one that's multi uh, producing your multi-attacks, and if you're not on Gordora, you're not producing multi-attacks, so she's like... It's a niche option. Uh, unfortunately, like Mega Colony just doesn't have a lot of good um, uh, options for their G zone. Um, then you have I, I'm playing two Lawless Mutant Deity Obturandus. He's just filler at this point. Uh, most of these cards are filler because there's really just not much else that you can do with these other strides that Gradora is not going to be able to do. Um, so, and especially because the meta is so fast now, him being GB2, he's not going to do much, and I hate to say it because I love his, I love his artwork, God knows, I mean, that's why I have the sleeves on the G-Zone, but unfortunately, he's just, he's just been power crept. Um, one Zoa, odds are you can use this card, um, that's why we still run the Antlions, uh, just because if, if you, like, naturally draw into an Antlion, you can just Zoa and try to cheese your opponent out that way. It's not really going to come up a lot because you're applying a lot of pressure early game, um, but it's there as an option. Uh, if you if you don't have one, can't afford it, don't even bother. It's not that super big of a deal. Um, one megaloma. This is literally just filler. Um, it's it's here in case I need to. If I need if I'm again in a bad situation and I need that immediate like oh you know save my ass button get out of jail free card that's in there for that. But so far that hasn't really come up. Um, so that's it for the strides. Um, I would so, like. My other Mega Colony player friends have mentioned possibly running the GB8 in here, but again, the premium meta is so fast, the odds of you actually getting to GB8 are almost non-existent, so it's not even bothering worth it. Like, I even said, just just getting to GB2 with uh, Obturandus, or even just getting three face up for um, Zoa is just going to be a struggle. So, odds are the GB8 is not going to be even doing anything. Plus, on top of that, um, as weird as it sounds, because I do run cards like Lancer that rely on my opponent's field, I don't like to rely on cards that that depend on what my opponent is doing. I don't. I just don't like it. I, I, it's not reliable, it's not dependable, and I feel overall it just makes the overall power level of the deck weak. That being said, onto the G-Zone. So we have two copies of Featherwall Mutant Deity Morphosian. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't read the names of these cards in God knows how long. Um, so this is a decent G-Guard. Um, if your opponent has two or less standing rear guards, or standing units, I believe. No, standing rear guards. Um, then it gains 10k shield. Pretty simple, 25k shield. E- easy condition, generally, if your opponent's swinging with their Vanguard or their second rear guard column, unless it's an Excel clan. 
Um, it's pretty easy G guard. Uh, then I run two of the flip G guard, um, and she's really in here for utility. So those of you who don't know what she does, GB one, uh, when placed, flip up a G guardian. Um, your opponent can choose to rest two of their rear guards, and if they don't, you draw a card, counter charge one, soul charge one. So she's just in there for utility. Like unfortunately, she doesn't gain power or shield. But it's there for utility. Like I said, the deck is kind of, um, you know, iffy on soul. So, and then one last card I run. I won run cop one copy of Mutant Deity Fortification Gris Fort. This card's kind of funny. Um, like I said, because the deck isn't, like, inherently reliant on Counter Blast and it has a lot of ways to re recur Counter Blast, um, you can utilize this against, um, you know, units that require, like, back row setup, uh, and so, for those of you who don't know what it does, it's, um, when it's placed, you can counter blast one, and then you rest all of your opponent's, uh, back row rear guards. And then, I believe it's for every two rested units your opponent has, it gets 5k. Uh, so, you counter blast one, this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, the battle that your Vanguard was attacked by your opponent's Vanguard. It has to be by your opponent's Vanguard, which is the only downside to this card. Uh, you pay the cost if you do rest all of your... All the units in your opponent's back row, and this unit gets 5k for every two of your opponent's units in rest. Okay, so, yeah, so it's for every two, so they swing with Vanguard, you you drop this, you rest all of their boosters for their other attacks, uh, it gains 10k if they have a full back row, if not, it's whatever. But it's good to cheese out certain things, um, like, uh, my friend has a Saint Guard deck, so they go into Crystal Luster, and copy Saint Guard, and then they swing in with Crystal Luster, and I just drop a Gris Fort and make them cry because they don't have three uh, Grade Ones to rest to restand. Uh, so it's kind of it's like it's good for niche situations like that, but a lot of times it's just kind of flip fodder for uh, Relish Lady. Um, so that's my deck profile. Like, I, um, since Clan Selection came out, like I really wanted to, to try this. I've been looking for like a new Mega Colony deck because the Cradle stuff wasn't really doing it for me. Um, like, yeah, Gridora makes Cradles, but I almost never utilize that unless I absolutely need to. Because, um, like, the Cradle stuff is good, but I find, like, we're in a meta right now where control just isn't good enough. And I don't think we ever will be unless they drastically change things for the format in the future. So, I was trying to find a Mega Colony list that can kind of keep up with today's meta. Now, I don't, I don't personally believe this is going to be, like, any sort of, like, anywhere close to Tier 1 or anything like that. Seems it seems good casually, um, and then also I think it might be like around tier two, like kind of mid, maybe mid to high tier two, depending on matchups. But uh, it's fun if you guys play Mega Colony. Um, I highly recommend you try it. It's just I, I find it very enjoyable just being able to from the get go be able to, to get five attacks a turn, and you're doing for hitting for decent numbers. Um, and on top of that too, uh, it the deck doesn't really rely on counter blast. So like if you're playing if your opponents like to cheese you out by like trying to damage deny you and then O to six you, um well guess what? You can you don't need counter blast to do anything. All counter blast does in this deck is give you extra benefits. Like yes, a counter blast for Gridor for Stride Gridor is um board stun is fantastic, but it's not necessary. You're trying to aggro them. You're not trying to really control the board. Um so that being said guys, I hope you enjoyed this deck profile. Um I hope to not be absent for fucking eight months at a time again. Um, like I said, I just had a lot going on, and I was focusing on other things. So I apologize for that, guys. Um, I hope you uh, hope you try out the deck. Tell me how you think of it. If you have any suggestions, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And uh, until then, I will see you next time. Peace.